The length of a smoothing plane is typically 10 inches. Jointing and jack planes are longer and heavier. Most boards have high spots and low spots along their faces, which need to be smoothed out before use. Jointing planes excel at this since their soles are so long. The long sole of a jointing plane overlaps several of the hollows and high spots at one time. Shown is a wood body smoothing plane. This particular smoothing plane is shop made and features a sculpted body. The iron is adjusted by tapping either the top of the plane to advance the iron or the rear of the plane to retract the iron. There is great satisfaction derived from creating your own woodworking tools. With some experience you can create wooden hand planes such as this. All the components are easily available including the plane iron assembly. A bandsaw is a necessary piece of machinery to be able to create these wooden hand planes however. The sole of a wooden smoothing plane is shown here. A harder, more hard wearing wood is used in the sole. A mouth insert can also be seen. This insert has replaced the original portion of the sole ahead of the plane iron. This part of the wood sole wears faster than the rest of the sole and so it can be replaced. The edges of the sole are slightly chamfered to prevent scratching of wood surfaces. When preparing rough lumber, planing diagonally across the board is a very effective method of quickly removing a lot of wood. The diagonal strokes can be in the shape of an arc as shown here. This method quickly and effectively brings the board down to a desired thickness. The cutting iron will need to be very sharp when dressing lumber. Wood is quickly removed from the surface when planing diagonally, but small ridges left over will need to be removed afterwards. Dressing lumber is a lengthy, labor-intensive process, but it can be a peaceful, satisfying one. Preparing a rough board is shown here. The large four plane is designed for this operation. The strokes are diagonal. Initially, pencil lines are scribbled across the face of the board as shown. The pencil lines help in determining what areas of the board have been flattened. A rigid workbench with a good clamping system is necessary to hold the board, as there is much pressure being applied to the board. The rough board continues to be flattened or dressed here. The pencil lines are slowly disappearing as the work progresses. The strokes are skewed or diagonal to better tackle the high and low spots on the rough board. Here the diagonal strokes have been completed. The pencil lines have all been planed off. The high and low spots have now been removed. Hand planing continues in the direction of the board now. The operation has now progressed from flattening the board to smoothing the face of the board. After a series of diagonal and straight strokes have been performed and the board is reasonably flat, the long surface of the board is checked. Checking is performed with a long straight edge placed along the surface. High or low spots can easily be seen using this method. If any high or low spots remain, they can easily be removed through localized planing. In this view, a shorter straight edge is used across the width of the board. This technique is used to determine if the board is flat across its width. If the board needs further dressing, hand planing continues with either a longer foreplane or a shorter smoothing plane. It can be seen that shavings and not dust are produced by the hand plane. This can be attributed to a very sharp plane iron. When planing the edge of a board, spot planing can be applied to any high spots remaining. A straight parallel line drawn across the edge can be used as a reference. It is better to set the hand plane to remove finer shavings when performing this step. Constantly checking the edge for square is recommended. A small engineer square is ideal for checking the edge against the face of the board for square. To smooth the face of a board, either a smoothing or jointing plane can be used. High spots are marked and these are plane first. The board is gen checked for uniformity across both its length and its width and the operation is continued if necessary. Shown on the next page is a technique for removing a high spot. A parallel pencil line can be seen running along the edge of the board here. This provides a reference surface. High spots can easily be distinguished now. Spot planing is then performed to remove these high spots. When the high spots are visibly gone, 
Planing can continue along the full length of the edge. The long edge of a board is being prepared using a bevel up jack plane. The jack plane has a longer sole and is better suited to removing high and low spots through better registration. Instead of riding over high spots, the longer jack plane sole will remove the crests of the high spots. The long edge is regularly checked for square while performing this operation as it is important to have the four edges of a board square to one another. Jointing of the edge of this board is continued here. When the shavings become long and uniform in thickness, the edge can be considered to be flat. There is a learning curve to the jointing technique and you should practice jointing scrap boards for a while to master this. Multiple passes continue to be performed along the edge of the board. The width of the board can be adjusted using this technique. Using the pencil reference line drawn along the edge earlier, the edge can be planed down to a desired width. Prior to the advent of woodworking machinery, all wood used in furniture and cabinets was prepared this way. Block planes are very versatile in the workshop. Although they were initially designed for end grain work and excel at this, they can also be used as small single-handed smoothers. The block plane is easy to grip with one hand where the palm rests on a large lever cap. When planing end grain, it is important to keep the block plane level and square with the workpiece. When planing end grain, use one hand to maintain pressure on the toe of the plane. Your other hand is then used to push the plane. The block plane should be set for very light cuts. The plane iron will need to be extremely sharp to remove slices of wood from end grain. Skewing the plane slightly helps to minimize effort in the forward direction. Always strive to finish wood surfaces with a hand plane. Wood surfaces finished with a hand plane have a smoother finish than a surface which has been sandpapered. Sandpaper naturally makes a surface fuzzy, whereas smoothing with a hand plane leaves a glass-like finish. Block planes are used to create chamfers or bevels at the ends of a board or panel. Longer planes can be used on the long edges or with the grain as they have the advantage of leaving a flat accurate edge. Block planes also excel when adjusting smaller boards. As an example, the small components of a jewelry box interior are ideally suited to a block plane. If you only have one hand plane available to you, the smoothing plane would be the choice, as it is the most versatile. Smoothing planes excel at surface planing of boards. Here, a block plane is used to smooth the end of a board. The block plane iron is set for a very light cut. The block plane is also skewed when pushing forward to decrease the resistance. End grain is naturally difficult to plane and a very sharp iron is essential. When using a block plane, one hand maintains pressure over the front of the block plane while the other hand pushes it. Here the smoothing operation continues. When pushing the block plane forward, if it begins to chatter, try to decrease the depth of cut. If the block plane continues to chatter and does not move smoothly, this is an indication that the plane iron is becoming dull and should be honed or sharpened. In this view, a block plane is used to create a chamfer along the long edge of a board. Creating chamfers is a fairly common procedure in woodworking. The block plane is also skewed when creating the chamfer. This reduces resistance but also minimizes any tear out which may occur. Shown is a more detailed view of creating a chamfer on the long edge. It is important to set the plane iron depth to take light cuts. Light cuts ensure that wood will not be torn from the surface. Although it is more time consuming to take light cuts, any tear out along the surface being plane is greatly reduced. The thumb of the right hand is being used to apply slight downward pressure as shown. Another effective technique to trim and square the ends of a board is through the use of a shooting board. A shooting board has a flat surface where a flat board rests against a fence. At one side of the shooting board is a track for a hand plane. The hand plane is usually a longer type such as a jack or four plane. These hand planes have greater mass and weight, both necessary requirements for this operation. As the plane is moved forward in the track, it trims a fine slice off the end of a board. 
Since the face of the board is flat, it is used as a reference and the end is effectively squared to this face. It is important to have sharp planes when using a shooting board.